Hello friends, welcome to my channel again. I am Vijay Lohar here with an another topic of CCNA and in this session we are going to discuss about encapsulation method we can use with our Cisco router WAN interface. So basically encapsulation is a method of adding header and trailer around your data before sending it over the WAN interface and some data linker protocol is responsible for doing that task like HDLC that is high level data link control protocol, PPP, point to point protocol, frame relay, ATM, etc. So let's talk about HDLC that is higher level data link control protocol. It's a Cisco proprietary encapsulation method and by default all the Cisco router WAN interface is enabled with HDLC encapsulation method. It's very fast but has some limited features in comparison of PPP. So PPP that is point to point protocol is a standard encapsulation method. It means it can be applicable with other vendor router too. And it use NCP and LCP as sub protocol. NCP is for the communication with other protocol and LCP is for controlling the link. And it also supports user authentication and it uses PAP that is password authentication protocol and CHAP as the authentication technique. A part of that, PAP is also capable of compression and error correction. So let's see how we can enable our router WAN interface with the PPP protocol. So first of all, let's proceed for the lab setup here. As you can see, I have a basic lab here. We are assuming that this router, that is router 1, will be our ISP router and our internal network is here. And I have already given some IP address for the network like uh, for this network. IP address will be 192.168.0.0 slash 24 network and for the WAN interface IP address will be 10.0.0.0 slash 8 and for our internal LAN computers the IP address will be 172.16.0.0 slash 16 network. So let's configure the router first here like uh, we'll configure the basic configuration here configure terminal host name first of all I am going to set host name for the router 1 and I am assigning name as ISP and I am going to configure fast ethernet of our ISP router and IP address will be 192.168.0.1 with the subnet mask 255.255.255.0 and no shutdown to activate your interface exit now I am going to configure serial interface with the WAN IP address and as the IP address is from 10.0.0.0 network I'll use IP address 10.0.0.1255.0.0.0 no shutdown since we are assuming router 1 as ISP router or DC device we'll have to set clock rate here so I'm using this range exit so basic can configuration of router 1 has done here next we'll have to configure router 2 enable configure terminal push name client interface fast ethernet i'm going to configure lan interface of router 2 with the ip address 172.16.0.1 with the subnet mask 255.255.255 0 0.0 no shutdown exit now I'm going to configure WAN interface of router 2 interface serial 0 by 0 and the IP address will be 10.0.0.2 and the subnet mask is 255.255. Sorry 255.0.0.0 no shutdown and we do not need here the clock rate command because we are DTE device or the client device clock rate is always set by our service provider for the synchronization and exit I have already configured IP address for the computers as you can see here for the both end and now next we have to do here is we'll have to use some routing method like I'm using routing protocol as RIP so IP root there are two network which is directly connected with router 1 so configure terminal router RIP version 2 so I'm going to configure our router 
with the RIP routing protocol and the network will be 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 and the second one is 192.168.0.0 .0. so our router one is enabled with RIP version 2 same thing we'll have to enable router 2 with RIP version 2 as routing technique so IP root configure terminal router RIP version 2 and the network we are connected with is 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 and 172.16.0.0 okay so once we have configured our routing protocol we must get reply from other end let's verify the communication I am pinging this computer from this one we must get reply if we have configured properly yes we are getting reply it means our router and routing protocol is working properly as you can see here our router and lab is ready now uh, there is some encapsulation method is working let's verify which encapsulation is by default enabled in our WAN interface so interface serial 0 by 0 and we can see here that the default encapsulation method is encapsulation method is SDLC so we haven't applied SDLC uh, SDLC encapsulation method but it is by default enabled with both router that's why the communication is going on here but we have to configure this encapsulation method as PPP that is point to point protocol so let's proceed for the further what we have to do here is we'll have to enable our WAN interface for the PPP encapsulation method so interface serial 0 by 0 of ISP router and I'm defining that in encapsulation method will be PPP instead of SDLC okay as I have applied or I have enabled the PPP protocol in WAN interface of C uh, router 1 our interface goes to down because this end is using PPP as encapsulation method as this router is using SDLC so we'll have to enable both router for SDLC interface serial 0 by 0 now what I have to do here is I'll have to define that the interface will use encapsulation method as PPP once I have enabled PPP we can verify that our network is ready again and we are getting reply it means our WAN interface is using encapsulation method as PPP let's verify it so interface serial 0 by 0 and your encapsulation method is PPP now that's why we are communicating properly so you have changed your uh, encapsulation method with uh, PPP but now if you want to authenticate other router to come to encapsulate we'll have to use some other command here like we either you can use PAP method of, uh, of authentication or CHAP method of authentication so first of all we'll see here how we can apply PAP in our PPP so what next I have to do here is I'll have to create some user which will user account which will be used by other router to authenticate himself so I'm going to create a user in ISP router that username whatever name you can use here with the password whatever password you can assign here like I'm assigning Cisco and this password this username and password will be verified by router two so I'm creating username and router two for ISP like R2 and the password is Cisco okay so what next I have to do here is accessing interface serial 0 by 0 I am using both router to configure simultaneously 
so I am accessing serial interface of ISP router and what next I have to do here is the interface uh, the interface is already enabled with PPP so I am going to define that PPP is going to authenticate by PAP and once I enabled the PAP authentication protocol your interface goes down again now at this end what I have to do here is I'll have to enable PAP PPP authentication will be PAP now what we have to define here is whatever the username is created in this router and whatever the name is created in this router will have to exchange with each other so what I have to type here is PPP PAP sent username by router 1 or ISP router is R1 and the password is Cisco again in router 1 PAP PPP PAP sent username is R2 with the password Cisco let's verify the communication again let's ping it yes we are getting reply from here and our PAP protocol is working properly yes we are getting reply here so both end is working properly but right now we are using so interface serial 0 by 0 and the encapsulation method is PPP you can verify which authentication technique we are using right now so running configuration and we'll see here just here you can see here that your PPP protocol is enabled with PAP that's it guys I hope you have got the concept of uh, PAP here and in our next video we'll see how we can apply CHAP protocol in our WAN interface I hope you like this video if so please do share and subscribe with our channel and till next video bye bye